Hi everyone, we are back Yay. with Nick and Ian. We're st still playing in the computers. Hello. Hello. You know, we are in a big building where the Adobe headquarters in San Francisco. And uh, yeah, just plugging some uh, MacBook Pros and then we will start this uh, UX design UI session with uh, something I'm very excited about because you work in a very specific field of yeah. the industry. Yeah, we yep. do. You know what? I will let you introduce yourself. Sure. Um, and run the show. Okay. Okay. No problem. Yeah, I'll just okay. take it from just here. No problem. Here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no stress. Uh -huh. uh, I'm Ian Wall. I'm uh, one of the creative directors of Beholder. Um, it's a company Nick and I started to uh, do uh, UI and UX design for games. Um, I've been doing UI design. Did for you do a Flappy Bird? I'm sorry? Flappy Bird? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Great UI. <laughs> <laughs> Very cap, simple. Cap, cap. Very intuitive, right? <laughs> yeah, that guy made a lot of money. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've been doing um, UI design for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing games for a little less than that. Um, and yeah, worked on World of Warcraft, uh, EverQuest way back in the day. Yeah, small games. Yeah, small <laughs> games. Never heard of those, right? Um, Planet Side, well as at Sony as well. Um, yeah, that pretty much runs the gamut. Um, and now we're doing this thing. That we are. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> Everyone, I'm Nick Slough, um, other creative director of at Beholder, or UI UX studio for mm -hmm. uh, for games. Um, I have a similar background to Ian, but a little different. Um, I started out traditional art, doing comic books, that sort of thing, then transitioned over to advertising, and that's where I learned and kind of cut my teeth on graphic design. Um, got into Photoshop, Illustrator, um, and then uh, transitioned over to gaming about nine to 10 years ago, and I've been doing that ever since. Uh, I sh the games I shipped at Blizzard, I shipped StarCraft II, I worked on Diablo III, um, StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm, and Ian and I um, really uh, sunk our teeth in together as a team uh, for Heroes of the Storm. That was the, that was the game we worked on the most. And that kind of brings us up to up to date. Okay. So plug in this stuff here. So do we have video uh, video game players in the chat? Like, <laughs> let's see, we Probably have some none, gamers. Right? No, 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 no. Maybe not on Behance. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on Twitch. So <laughs> <they're Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of game people out out, out there. You get to so, see other industry people put up stuff on Behance all the time. Yeah. You have Behance accounts, yeah? Yeah. yeah? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, we've been on Behance for a bit. Um, cool. Yeah, we are live yeah, on actually, Behance this week. Nick, uh, Nick got started on Behance before I did, pretty sure. Yep. Uh, I put up my yeah, initial... Uh, hmm? Your initial portfolio? Initial portfolio was up on, uh, well, my soon, really early days of Behance, I put my portfolio up there, uh, and I started with uh, StarCraft and Diablo stuff up there. So it's it's been up there for a bit now. Awesome. It's like three, four years. So the concept of the show, uh, because uh, this is also the first official Adobe Live uh, stream on Behance, because now we'll be live every week. Right. Yep. So this week it's about UX design, next week about graphic design and yep. packaging. Within two weeks about illustration, digital painting, uh, which is also super important in the video game industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are We're going to be doing a little awesome. bit of everything. Yeah, and we'll do everything <laughs> like in one show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, so the concept is that, okay, we have the theme, uh, we have these apps, and we invite a top creatives, and we just ask you to create something over three days because right. you will be live with us today, two hours, two hours tomorrow, and two hours right. on Thursday. Right. So what is your plan? What do you have in mind? So, um, well, I guess one thing is we'll talk a little bit about um, how the UI process in general works for uh, games versus what other people kind of perceive as UX or UI process traditionally across uh, web and mobile and things like that because they differ drastically. Um, so uh, one of the main things is like we'll we'll get like a, a brief or something like that from either if you're working in the industry you're going to be at a big game studio or a small game studio you might be yeah, an indie, indie game, game or whatever yeah. and you get like some kind of uh, design brief or uh, like an your, indie game on Steam it's just I just pretend I know right, video games right, right. <laughs> Steam <laughs> just one of those Steam games <laughs> <laughs> one of 300,000 of them whatever <laughs> uh, but um, usually working with other game designers and um and so it's it's a very collaborative experience in terms of um, uh, 
the UI isn't necessarily the star of the show. It's a part of the concert in, in a way, mm -hmm. uh, part of the orchestra, I guess. Um, and the uh, that that process in general is a lot more, I guess, iterative. And um, you'll you'll build prototypes, you'll build uh, mock-ups, things like that. Um, oh, you got to yeah, we just give you some more. Yeah. yeah, we're still setting up as we're uh, as we're kind of. Yeah. Um, Can we have the GoPro for two seconds, Chris? Sure. Because I've been I've been running Adobe Live for over a year. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we have these mouse. <laughs> yeah, actually, so and and the, mouse and the only design. one of the only reasons I have that is because I left mine at these home. Are, these are the two gaming <laughs> mouses. Oh no, is it the what's the name? It's razor. Yeah. Razor. Naga, I would have brought my razor, oh my but I yeah. actually left mine at home, so I had to pick up this one. My son is crazy uh, about the razor. <laughs> he has the keyboard with all the colors. I need extra and buttons. <laughs> <laughs> to select the size of my brush in Photoshop. Exactly. Yeah. I don't actually have it mapped because this is like a brand new mouse. So this is all like completely So stopped. we start with a brief? Yeah, so we we kind of uh, okay. did Let's a, open little, the brief. Uh, a little short one. So obviously this is made up. Um, this is not a real thing. We're not actually going to make this game. Um. <laughs> we did. We made up. We made up a game from scratch just for this. So right. we're kind of filling in the gaps of what a client would typically give us. For uh, so this is uh, we're calling it Gobstoppers. It's don't name your game that. It's a terrible exactly. name. Exactly. Uh, but uh, uh, we just threw this together for fun. So it's kind of like a, a Halloween adventure game because uh, it's Halloween. So why not? Um, so it's like an action RPG, so it's kind of like Diablo kind of esque. Okay. Uh, obviously, none of this is is actually real, so it's like we're we're kind of hand waving the game design a little bit. Um, although we both have done game design in the past too, so it's uh, we're we're just doing a really lean thing so we can get some screens together. Um, so yeah, this is like the idea is that's an action RPG. So you've got the standard tropes of like an inventory screen and you're looting stuff and collecting candy in this case, um, and you're trying to defeat the gob, which is the bad guys, right? So, okay. Hence the name. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is basically kind of like a um, overview of like what we want to build. So we want to do a logo and put together a UI kit and a main menu and an option screen, a splash screen, a loading screen, like all the pieces oh, yeah. that... The all first experience. Yeah, like the first experience, it. and then all the way into like and, inventory and items, oh, a yeah, skill yeah. screen, like, awesome. and kind of do that stuff. And so um, we're not going to art everything because we don't have time, uh, but we're going to art some of <laughs> six, it. Six hours is a good amount of time, but it's, it's, we'll, it's we'll see it's what we can short. get done. Yeah. 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 Um, so we'll kind of, we'll do a little bit of the UX stuff and talk about it, and then um, we'll do some of the art stuff and talk about it, and we'll kind of go back and forth and, and, okay. and go from there. Awesome. No, um, I have the the song of uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, right. Stuck in my <laughs> or head. Or Nightmare so. Before Christmas. So no, yeah, going on. Your it's head. stuck forever. <laughs> so this is like generally like we would normally get this from a client, or we this would be like a design overview for um, uh, what would be uh, given to us, or a, we'd have a meeting with a game designer and and have this conversation. Um, and kind of the overview of the game and it's co-op or it's not and that okay. type of thing. Um, so in this case we're doing like a co-op type of game with like um, three other friends and you do couch co-op or online play or whatever and so we'll have representations of other characters uh, status and stuff on the inventory and, or uh, not on the inventory on the HUD screen things like that. So graphic uh, designers you know like to keep the inspiration going they have to read a lot of magazines and stuff. Yeah. So, so in your Just case tons you, of games. Yeah, <laughs> But Are seriously, you, like yeah, seriously, yeah, we, yeah. we play a lot of games, and and some of them, I mean, I, you know, poor us, some of them we we don't really like very much. We were like, even the genre we're not interested in, but they might have something very interesting for us to take away from it. Okay. So we'll, and the thing that's interesting is some of these games have deep systems in them that you only really get exposed to if you are five, ten, fifteen, twenty hours into the game. So sometimes we have to we have to dive into the game and and spend about 20 hours playing it and analyzing. It's kind of like when, um, it's one of the first things when I worked in advertising, it was like, once you work in advertising, all commercials are ruined for you. Like, yeah. it's kind of, it, I'm not saying that all games are ruined. I love playing games, but definitely as we work on games and we're playing them, 
you analyze them and pick them apart in a different way that isn't the same way that you just sort of blindly enjoyed them beforehand. Now you're kind of looking at them and you're like, oh. and, then, and then you find yourself saying things out loud that you're just sort of like, no, you should just be sitting down having fun playing the game. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they didn't really integrate that system in very well, and I don't really like how this is. But You start overanalyzing yeah. all the interactions yeah. and stuff, or um, you kind of see the behind the veil a little bit too because especially if they're using particular engines, you have an idea of how certain things get implemented. And, um, and so it, it takes a little bit of the mystique away because um, you kind of know how the cookie's made. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's less impressive, I guess, um, than if it's just materialized from nothing. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, Shane we, Wilson? Yeah, we have a green screen behind us, yeah. We don't have Acrobat behind us. We no, don't have a there, PDF. Is there ac- it's, it's a green screen. Acrobats behind us? Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's a, a big, it's a huge, 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 huge billboard. Really crisp, no perspective distortion. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. You guys are on point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant monitor. Uh, uh, Helen is saying, so Helen is an animator. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. She has the same issue when she watches a movie. Like, yeah. Oh, right, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you yeah. see it oh, and it ruins it. The walking c- cycle. Uh, yeah, right, you're right. like... Uh, especially in CG movies, every once in a while you see, uh, uh, like, hands clip through something or something like that, which is a very common thing in games. Like, it's very oh, okay. difficult to make stuff not clip. Like, if you played World oh, of Warcraft, yeah. like, armor and, and horns and hair and, and cloaks and all that kind of stuff, like, clip into the model because it's very difficult to build all that stuff so that it takes a lot of math to not have it happen (laughs) math is expensive on computers right yeah Yeah. um or just tons of prep and all the models Mm because those things all get built as one piece Mm -hmm. so like every armor piece gets built onto the character um and uh yeah it's it's a lot of stuff to track and keep perfect um but yeah so this is uh is this my water it's yours thank you Okay, so how do you want to dispatch the work? So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna <laughs> give kind of an water. overview of like like Ian talked about uh, some of the some of the the brief overview of, of the client and like kind of like like what we typically get from them, and then we're gonna talk about generally what we give as deliverables, and then we can work through oh, those. Okay. So and we we can kind of depending on if if people you know chatting in want to see certain things yep. and they see they're like hey Focus spend a little bit more time some. on that like we can stop we could spend a little more time in this i would say that for a, for a ui ux uh, stream there's gonna be a decent amount of illustration and painting and photoshop in it as well cool. because in games it's really hard to get away from that okay um awesome. but so we can if, if if people are interested in that uh, we can dive more into that um Mostly the division, although it's not 100 percent. Ian's going to be handling a lot of the XD and um, wireframing work, yep. and I'm going to be handling a lot of taking it and bringing it into Photoshop and 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 sort of polishing it up. And you can kind of see the interactions that we have in between passing it back and forth, and and we sort of uh, kind of where we kind of find that balance. So cool. yeah, we can we can start really wherever. Um, Someone was just saying in chat they just reached level 1,000 in Heroes of the Storm. Oh my god. Holy crap, yeah. <laughs> Grats. <laughs> that's that's a crazy amount of time. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, in Eric, we'll be live every week from now on on Behance.net slash live. So this will be the Adobe Live show, so it's on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every week. Which is pretty cool. Okay, so... Um, yeah. Yeah, so do you want to jump into mood board stuff or you yeah. want to jump into like example directory, set up the project? Let's jump into, uh, let's just give a brief, we saw the brief, but let's just do yeah. a brief overview of kind of like what someone would give us. So in this example, we talked about Gobstoppers. Um, go ahead, don't steal the name, it's awful. Um, <laughs> it's yours. It, it's yours, have it. Uh, so. You know, traditionally, we, we, Ian and I, we'd be sitting down on our first day of work, and we we go, okay, what do they need? And the deliverables are: they need a logo, they need a creative and art direction for their UI. So a lot of the times, games will have a creative and art direction. An art director will be there, but they want a UI that meshes and works with the game world. Oh, yeah. So the environments and the characters themselves have a look and feel to them. And typically, when they come to us, they want those to have a very a, a matching look and feel that also kind of is usable. So we'll probably usually at this point break off in tandem. I'll break off and start funneling an art direction and a creative direction. And if there's UX work, which typically clients come to us for both, typically Ian will start breaking off and working with the system designers and the designers of the game and start breaking off what's the experience that someone has walking through that. 
So typically at this process, um, client, let's say, has nothing. They don't even have a logo. So, and that actually happens a lot more than not. Like there'll be a certain stage into a game, they'll have models, they'll have environments, they'll have design. They might even have a playable game for us, but they don't have a logo. They don't have a look and feel for basically- They might just have a demo also. Yeah, they we've, might- We've done that for clients as well, where they, they're they actually actively pitching a, a, a game to a publisher um, and they don't really have anything. They don't have any of the marketing materials ready and they're in the act of of polishing uh, what's considered a vertical slice. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not familiar, uh, a vertical slice is essentially um, a version of the, is a very thin version of the game, but it's, it's vertical because it has all the systems active. Um, so if you can open an inventory, there's an inventory. If there's crafting, crafting is there. It doesn't have all of the crafting things built, but it lets you experience that um, aspect of the game. So it's built in a way that is done relatively rapid, um, and it's it's built to demonstrate the full breadth of the game without actually building the entire game because you can't do yeah. that in a really limited time. So it tends to be a very um, contained experience, um, but it attempts to give the user the ability to experience all of the independent systems that they want to build in the game eventually. Um, and cool. so oftentimes people are busy building that, which is a lot of work, um, and they don't have the UI set up or they don't have marketing materials like logos or things like that, or sometimes they need presentation material to, to complement the the, um, yeah, the, the game yeah. demo itself, mm -hmm. right? Like It's like, this is rough and you're playing through it, but this is kind of our vision of where it's going, right? Oh, and so yeah. that's like the more glossy. Yeah, sometimes they show previews, versions, right? right in convention right. and yeah, you and, need to pitch the vision. Yeah. And those can actually even be yeah. separate. Sometimes they can have very little game and just do a sizzle CG reel and like kind of, you know, wet the beak for people who, who are excited about the franchise or excited about mm -hmm. that type of game. Um, it's also a good point to basically bring up uh, the differences probably between traditional app and web development yeah. and the difference between game development. Game development, so coming from Blizzard, two years is actually a short game development cycle, <laughs> but two years is like a, considered like a decent game development cycle for like a typical Call of Duty game or something that's AAA at that level. Uh, or two years is also fine if you're a small team and you have to put together a small game. Two, it takes about two years to kind of put all your stuff together. And during that process, you have to learn to not love anything you're making because they will play test it, they will put it through the gauntlet, yeah. it will be destroyed, rebuilt, yeah. reimagined. So um, if you hear us talking about a lot of thrash, that's basically what we're referring to, is like game development has a lot of thrash to it. So you, 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 you get a thick skin really quickly in game development as far as <coughs> like not falling in love, like if you find yourself falling in love with the design you have, you almost have to break that emotion off a little bit until it feels like it's in the game and it's solid and it's been tested and we leave a lot of dead bodies in our wake. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. So, um, yeah, I think probably starting to jump into to what we're doing in our process. I'm guessing that we can. It, it depends on how you want to format this. We could start doing things in unison, and you could go back and forth because obviously, as we're doing things, it's they as you like. Like we can yeah. uh, show uh, you, bo uh, like both queens at the same time, or switch from one to another one. We can do whatever you want. I think we can, we can switch back and forth, and we can just talk about process and stuff as we go. Yeah. Um, do you want to start with some XD stuff and kind of start start laying I, out some screens? I think or? we should start at the beginning, which the would very, be, oh, the, yeah. which would be mood boards be and mood. setting up the oh, project. The mood board. Okay. Um, so I. So I have an example directory here that I just uh, built real quick. Um, so normally this would just be like, I'll just drag this out. Mm -hmm. So we'll call this, we'll call this. Come on, so it's a game of mouse. It's, it's supposed to be precise. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um, so we'll name the directory, um, this is our project. So this is generally kind of how we lay stuff out. Um, there's a sh Usually we're working on Dropbox. So um, there's an assets folder, which is um, stuff from the client usually. So if they have a logo already or they have screenshots they oh, want yeah. us to you use or video assets. or whatever, uh, we'll dump them in there. Um, we usually share that so they can just upload stuff. Um, and Brad is asking what encompasses the delivery, like what what do you deliver at the end of the project? 
at the end of a project. Yeah. It depends on the client. Um, but generally, our deliverables will range from uh, finished logos in vector oh. and raster, um, including... Oh, vector uh, and raster. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes. It depends on the style it of it. It depends on All the right. style of the client. Um, uh, XD files, the uh, actual uh, raw XD file, along with JPEGs of all the wires. Oh, um, so do you, so do you understand the the, the flow, flow of everything? You have a prototype with the, with the flat wires. We Correct. we also build uh, in uh, Dropbox has a, a wiki esque type of um, uh, software called oh, Paper. Paper, it's so good. It's yeah. it's great. And so one of the things this is we what do, we use for the like the new video teaser we have. You know, at uh, the beginning of the oh, show, okay. yep. it's made by Odd Fellows. It's a motion design agency. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, to review the design, we use a uh, Dropbox paper. Oh, it's yeah, cool. so it's it's a really simple tool. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very simple. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is just like XD, it's very simple, yeah. which is one of the reasons why we like it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we'll end up dumping out JPEGs of all of the um, uh, um, content for the wireframes mm -hmm. and uh, we'll put those all up in paper and then document the any additional designs it's got annotations and stuff like that so we just build those in paper usually cool. um, it, if for some reason we can't use Dropbox or whatever and we have to deliver that stuff um, actually on the wires I'll just build annotations into the wires um, actually I, I can show an example of what it's like um, but uh, Usually, I'll take a version of the the wire itself, um, and then duplicate it on a new art artboard that's wider, and then just have a gutter that just has all the annotation documentation oh, yeah. in it, and then I'll just dump out JPEG. So yeah. there's a documentation version of it, and then just a still with nothing else. Um, the Dropbox has kind of eliminated the need for that documentation. Yeah, because now we can just yeah, drop it all just in the right in Dropbox, and then people <laughs> can comment on the annotations and stuff. And it's it's very um, it's it's an interesting way to be very collaborative in a very distributed fashion because we don't actually have to be sitting in a meeting with yeah. clients and stuff like that. They can just go in and like bang out a bunch of like, well, I have this concern or I like this or don't like that. And we can have dialogue in the comments and it, it's all um, uh, backed up and everything too, which is nice. Um, and then for the art stuff, I pretty much, I'll deliver PSDs. Um, yeah, right. like, I mean, it's, it, and those PSDs, um, it, it really depends. I don't use artboards because clients don't understand artboards. It's not because they aren't a useful feature. I use them myself. Interesting. But I found out that when I've delivered artboards to clients, They're, they get confused. They get they a little don't confused. Know how to navigate through they, the layers. They get they mm -hmm. get they get confused, especially if someone's old school with Photoshop. And like yeah, they, I mean, they artboards in Photoshop, it's quite new. Now, I mean, two years. Maybe. Two years yeah, is, yeah. is pretty new when it comes to Photoshop, considering how long it's been around. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll typically just do layer groupings in in, in a large Photoshop oh, okay. file, and, and you hide and hide. Yeah. I just yeah. and when I hand fo uh, files off to, to clients, they're they're usually very well very well organized and layered, and and I cut out all the the garbage that isn't used. That you were telling me that you you never name your layers. <laughs> Never. It. Layer 7,400. Actually, I, I, when it's I was It's very working, organized. It's I, very organized. It's very organized, <laughs> but nothing's labeled. I had one HUD file that was when I was working on Heroes of the Storm. That was when I when you make a new layer in that file. It said layer 2,570. Yeah. So there's there's been multiple occasions uh, when... Because I'll go back and um, we'll be working on a design, right? And... Um, I'll, I'll be doing wires for something initially, but eventually art comes online and, and the screens are arted up and it looks nice and everything. Um, and it's a lot more work to go back and recreate changes in, in art hmm. uh, in wires again. Um, so a lot of times we'll just go into the Photoshop documents and then just chop them up um, and right. like edit them and say, okay, this new button is going here. Um, and it generally looks like the style anyway. Um, but I brought that up because a lot of times that means me going into Nick's Photoshop <laughs> files and, then, and trying to find out what layer 3,462 was because I, I do label know. them people. Like, they <laughs> get labeled eventually. When, when they they do off. get but, labeled eventually. But yeah, pretty much we give fonts, we give we give PSDs, we give the style wires, guide. We give style guide. Style guide can be done usually on Dropbox, and those are usually our, our standard deliverables. Yeah. Um, and, and occasionally we do like UX brief type stuff as well, but that's a, a rare occasion. There's a, UX in the gaming industry is a little bit weird. Well, I should say uh, it's, uh, it's very prevalent in mobile 
Uh, oh, yeah. Because it's yeah. central and yeah. and web and things like that because the UI is the star of the show for yeah. the most part. Mm. Um, There's also the game is the UI, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's not as much the case in in PC gaming. Um, yeah. And so yeah. Also, they're mostly monetization, free to play monetization models, which require a oh, lot, lot of, of UI, UI thinking <laughs> and, a, and, a, and usually require a product designer. And right. they, they, they right. they're a little more involved on the UI end than. Uh, a non free to play, non monetization model game. Somebody yeah, was like asking when the business is there. Yeah, they do A B testing. A lot yeah. Of iteration. yeah, there's a lot. There's Which a lot of yeah, we do in games as well. Uh, it's just um, the pipeline for like pushing out patches and things like that is a lot more complicated hmm. than pushing out a patch to the App Store, for example. Um, somebody was asking. Uh, what we use to make the style guides. Um, I think usually just Photoshop. I used to use Photoshop. I use Dropbox Paper now. Yeah. So yeah. I used to just kind of style them up real nice in Photoshop, um, but Dropbox Paper kind of does that work for me. Hmm. So I, I don't have to think about it, and it makes my edits quicker, yeah. but everything else is Photoshop. Cool. Yeah. So you wanted to share the... Oh, so yeah. yeah then then some so like, um, well, yeah, so we don't have anything in there right, right now. Yeah, it's right. all just empty. Okay. Um, reference would be like stuff that we uh, that are using for reference to go, oh, we kind of like this, we kind of like that. Um, source is our files, and then share is where we would deliver milestones. I see. Um, and so source is PSDs and wires, and then we'll break these up by screen or whatever we feel is necessary. Um, and then they get reorganized into milestone drops that end up okay. going into the share folder. That's generally how we set this up. Okay. Um, and yeah, from here, usually we start talking about like for for this particular um, project, we we'd start talking about um, fonts we want to use, um, and um, well, even a step back from that, like like I think, and we're about to transition, I think, into the mood board stuff. stuff. Yeah. we we sit down, we talk to the client, we look at where their game currently at, and then of course we ask them questions about well, what what games. What games do you just like and you like the look and feel of? Because we might as well start with the, the palette of games that are out there. So yeah. we just start building mood boards is the first thing. And especially if they're hiring us to do creative direction, we absolutely do mood boards, and it's part of the style guide. Yeah. So okay. I don't know if you wanted to go through them. I could uh, I could book through them. All right. Yeah, you want to flip through them and just talk about kind of stuff we like. Mm -hmm. Sure, where were those? Um, are they not on my computer? They might not be. I yeah. might have them on mine. Uh, then, then you're uh, the man. Uh, I think it was reference files. Yeah, no, I put it in mood board. Oh, yeah. It's in reference files. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. okay. So typically, like I said, we'll lay these out in a um, in a Dropbox file, and the client will go in and basically give thumbs up, thumbs down. This I like, and sometimes they'll type a little thing going, I really like it because of this, and which really gives us a little bit of tooth. So we're going to kind of, this is a little bit of an interesting thing because we're going to kind of play... Um, the client and the the designer, you which is all of them, and open them up. It'll you can cycle through them that way. There, there we go. Now right. you should be able to page with your arrow keys. All right, so um, we we grabbed a bunch of references from games and from logos, yeah. and the client might go. Ooh, I, I really like how the, the, the stylization of the Death Proof logo is, but I don't really want the contrasty black and white. I'm like, okay, okay cool. Um, I like some of the, some of this might be just reminding us of, there we go. go some process. of us, some of this might just be reminding us of something that like a tone we want to hit, right? Like, like if this feels a little Ghostbusters-y, we're, we're in a good spot. Goonies, um, this is, we love this logo. Mm. yeah, this logo is fantastic. <laughs> and I, I think, I think you see like, as I'm already starting to flip through four images, where this is going, right? Like <laughs> we're, we're starting, we're starting to get like to Monkey Island. To Monkey yes, Island, exactly. <laughs> we're going to oh, be recreating Monkey game. Island, uh, and we, you know, we grab some things since this is a Halloween trick or treating game. We had some characters. We're we're going to be um, some of the, some, sometimes it's color tones. Like for this, I like the color tones, and it just so happens Purples we have blues. we do have a pinhead kind of character in our game. Yeah. So um, there's also that as well. Impossibles. Uh, no Jack for Skellington. Christmas, little Jack Skellington, a couple different references of that. Some of these, like I said, we might go, ooh, that art style is interesting, or right. maybe just the th thematically it is. We talked about one point, um, if you go back to that Jack Skellington one, we talked about um, uh, in the main logo having like characters running underneath it. Yep. Um, I, I think we ended up abandoning that, that approach, but... Um, and what I think is really interesting kind of come about here. this, if I was talking to the client, I'd be like, here's, look at these shapes. Hmm. And I, and I really start pulling in like like 
well, first of all, we're two-toned. I like that a lot. You know, we got a little bit of shading going on, but then mm -hmm. we've also got these really like distorted, like like literally, I took the marquee tool and just went bup, 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 and started yeah. making some some great shapes in there. Those are the things. Those when when a client goes, those are the kind of things I like. That's gold for us because then we can kind of latch onto those and and and, and play around with them. I got Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> I'll flip through these. This is just the this is just a rad poster. He's yeah, this is great. You can see like he's the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's back. He's Every always year. back. Every, Every year. year, a new beginning, a new new beginning, a new new beginning. Um, yeah. This is just a cool Whoa. like we yeah, just love awesome. the contrast of that poster. And Whoa. so, we're, you know, for us, it's just getting those inspiration points of like love the two, like the the yeah the the single color like it's just so cool the two tone. Um, Nightmare Before. It's obviously we're pulling more two tone posters, yeah. horror themed. You know, it's <laughs> really cool. Um, again, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> uh, Plants for Zombies: Garden Warfare. Actually, this has Whoa. you know, in a sense of if you if you've played this game before, it's got a real accessible, chunky UI, um, and that's definitely something. If you know, oh, yeah. we built this thing, a client would go like, "We want this to be accessible. We don't want this to just. We don't. We're not building a super hardcore game. Um, it's for a broad audience. So you know, we." Could, pull things in like this and discuss it. Pulp Fiction um, for some of the two tones and some of the thick font. The chunky font. Chunky font. We like chunky fonts. Saturday Morning Fever. All this <laughs> stuff is just, vibe. yeah, the cartoon vibe. Like, obviously Stranger Things is just, it's just, now we're copying from copies, right? Stranger <laughs> right, Things yeah. is just copying, copying from, from Stephen copy. King. And we're copying from that. Mm -hmm. um, so Dana is asking, when you have big game plans like uh, Blizzard, for instance, do you have any clauses about design iteration? Uh, so why do you oh, in terms of like <clears throat> how many iterations uh, we do? Yeah, like because imagine you have a customer; she's asking, uh, they don't really know what they want. Right. So you go back and forth, and it can take forever. So how do you? There's uh, a couple of ways to do it. One one way is just to have um, an open like we can do like a discovery phase where we're just doing exploration. There's not a hard deliverable. Okay. Um, but it's an official phase. Yeah, it's yeah, it's expert. it's it's a uh, we're we're trying to determine um, you know what what style direction they want to go into. Um, uh, they might not even have designs laid out, and they might be working through uh, specific design iterations where they're like, "We think we want to go this direction," and we might say, "Okay, well, here's here's a couple examples of how that might work, and here's some problems with that design or mm -hmm. this design or this aspect of it." Um, and eventually, we'll hopefully get to a point where. Uh, they have a more solidified design, and then we'll have another round of, of um, content creation, which is scoped uh, at that point. Because now we know what we're building, right? Okay. Now it's now it's like, yeah, we need 14 buttons and 400 yeah. icons and all this stuff, right? Um, and so then we would go from there. Um, and then there, there's other ways where um, we end up doing uh, funneling, which is kind of part of our process with mood boards. Um, where we start with mood boards and maybe some initial wires and we're funneling design and art styles um, to a specific direction. Mm -hmm. um, so we start with a lot of ideas that are like half cocked. They're not completely flushed out, um, but it gives some flavor or direction. Um, and then from there, they'll, you know, the client can say, well, I like this and I don't like that. And then now we have a smaller selection and we can refine those a little bit. And then we get a smaller selection and refine those till we have the thing that we're going to build and then go from there. And sometimes that's just, you, you've you refined it to the point where the wire's done and yeah. you just go in to make art um, and, and start flushing out that, that concept or that design some more. We, we want to have, we want to start at the cheapest things to throw away. Right. And then it gets more expensive to throw it away as we get yeah. as we narrow it down. Right. So we're funneling like, like <laughs> that's that's why always is the thing you can't like changes that happen at the bottom of the funnel are mm. just they're 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 completely disruptive if you if if you're wanting to go in a completely different direction. Not talking about mild pivots. Pivots happen all the time. You know, uh, creative director would be like, "Ooh, this is really not working," or it's really not changing their mind. You know, we got to work with either the game director, art director, creative director, whoever our our point of contact is at the game studio. So, uh, this one I, I paused on because, well, first oh, yeah. off, it's one of my most favorite logos of all time, the Venture Brothers logo. I love how they work. To, the t if you just squint your eyes, you can't even see the logo, <laughs> and right. then you're like, it's got the high five in the middle and then for the nose, <laughs> and then the, uh, then the, the, the knocked out for the yeah. teeth. It's yeah. just it's so brilliant. Good. And 
we stopped on this and went, all right, this is actually like a key inspiration image for yeah. us. We have, okay. not for the colors, but for the mm. fact that it's... Execution. Execution, two-tone. So we, we kind oh, of... two-tones, okay. Yeah, two-tones. Um, two-tones, and we ended up actually going two-tone with a mm. little bit of... Uh, oh, yeah, Willy Wonka. Wonka. Yeah. Little Willy Wonka, yeah. And so this is a little bit of a shorter. We have about 23 images. Typically, they'll go from about 40 to 60 images for mood boards, and then we'll drill it down to where, like, five dislikes, five likes. It's pretty... I'm not saying that's a hard rule, but that's kind of where people land. Like, they're okay. kind of like, these are the five... These are why we pull inspiration. I hate these because of these reasons. It gives us a really <laughs> great place to start yeah. moving on to our next step, which um, is typically, in this case, we are doing a logo, we are doing a creative direction, and we are doing game design. So at this point, I would peel off and go... The, I take the right fork in the road and I would start putting together a font selection and a logo and color sets and Ian would go ahead and start putting together um, wireframes and loose stuff and as we kind of do this we'll show you Ian will update his wires based on art direction that I get um, we don't do it all the time it really depends on which which stage at which the client decides to start kind of like a client might also go i'm not we're not ready for design we want to get the art stuff taken care of first and then mm -hmm. move on to design in that case i'll be like ian i've got a font i've got a logo for you and we'll i'll give him grayscale versions of that to dump into wireframes so that it looks a little more accurate and we have a little bit more of an idea of exactly where things are going to fall on the page so cool. um Right now, we can go off and start doing both of those, and you can either put both screens up or flip yeah. back and forth, depending, and ask us questions. So okay. uh, I think right now we'll both just start start doing work, and yeah. uh, we can kind of go from there. Um, so I will fire up the old XZ. So here, let me. Ian's firing back D. I'm going to go in, and uh, I'm going to show you the font that we picked. So we picked this font called Questerian. Questerian. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, it's so a good chunky font. It's Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a good starting base when I'm doing a logo. And I'll kind of show you how I'm going to go about that, too. I'm going to probably be doing something that's a little weird. Yeah, I was just going to say, Nick's logo creation process is a little crazy and off the beaten path. Okay. Uh, but it's brilliant in its own right. So it starts by <laughs> opening this program, Animate. OK. So I use Flash for all my vectors. I've always drawn all my vectors in Flash. I'm yeah. oh, sorry, Animate. <laughs> I'm getting used to that. It's, it's right in front of me. It has great drawing tools. It, I love the brush. I know. It, the brush tool, the smooth tools. Yeah. Um, it's the, And I, I'll show you kind of how I, I hack things apart and break them apart. It just I got used to it. I, I actually started on Illustrator. I started on Illustrator before they had colors in it. It was just black and white and grayscale tones <laughs> yeah. um, using the pen tool. And then... I used uh, when it was back when it was Flash, since Flash two or three, when they had actions, when they just introduced Action Script two point oh. So I, that's why it's hard for me to move to the term anime because it's just been ingrained in my brain yeah. for so long. I, I started using Photoshop before there was layers. Oh <laughs> so yeah, before layers. We're, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> one and do. Yeah, no one and do. One, no one, text layer. One load selection. One save selection. Yeah, everything was done in channels. Eesh. It was rough. Uphill both ways, in the snow, no shoes. <laughs> so we have a lot of questions also about, like, uh, we have people watching. They want to jump into the design video game mm -hmm. industry, you know? like, uh, And they were asking, like, uh, someone was asking, I, I want to do an internship at uh, Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. uh, should I market myself as a UX designer for gaming? Do you think there is an opportunity there? Or if you really sure. want to work for the studios, like, what would be the best... Uh, Path, you know. It depends on what you're into, really. I mean, if if you're if you're interested in UX design, you're interested in UI design. There's definitely opportunities there. Um, the gaming industry is very is kind of an odd duck because UX literally at every studio um, that I've worked with that I've been at, U, UX design means something different in every single oh, place. Interesting. So you have to be a little bit cautious about what you're getting yourself into and make sure that you're both on the same page <laughs> uh, because those things end up being can be very different things um, UI design tends to be pretty understood mm -hmm. in terms of um, you know you're gonna put stuff on the screen yeah. um, and the final one and, yeah, and, and it's gonna be art yeah. you know usually it's a UI UI artist position yeah. um, there doesn't tend to be a lot of UI designer positions okay. which 
if it is a UI design position, that tends to, to be a lot of UX stuff gets uh, wrapped oh, up I in see that. What you mean. So it gets a little Where bit. UI weird. artist, it's a lot of digital painting. It's a lot of digital painting and and uh, be, um, 3D exporting and, final assets. Yeah. Sometimes it's 3D. Yeah, um, there's a. Um, uh, uh, a guy that uh, we worked with at Blizzard that um, he did a lot of uh, mock-ups um, using Element 3D and oh. After Effects, oh, yeah. uh, and then uh, basically those would get deep, like they would get built on top of UI, and they would get deconstructed by the actual 3D artists and rebuilt. <laughs> <laughs> so we would use it as a mock-up tool essentially, and then they would get rebuilt in Engine with you know uh, models that are engine compatible and um, and with textures or effects that are built in the effects engine instead of uh, rendering out videos or things like that. Although you could still do videos if you wanted to. Um, it's just less flexible if you want to use that effect again somewhere else or change yeah. the color. Now you have to render out another video. Um, so I, uh, I'm i just building a little uh, flow chart here because uh -huh. um, I just do that in XD for sanity because um, it's it's not amazing at, at flowcharts, but it gets the job done. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, uh, just boxes and arrows. So Brad, be, I guess because you open Animate, <laughs> yep. are you expected to help with the animation transitions and building how elements interact on the screen? Typically, no. No. Um, okay. It, it, so animation, when it, the so we have been tasked with animating transitions, but they're more reference. They're not something that's final that can go into the game. Typically, that's all done in Game Engine, whether it's Unity or Unreal, whatever Game Engine you choose. So if it's to help convey an idea to yeah. someone, great. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and do some animations. And, and I have a background in animation. I know how to animate. I know how to do character animation. I actually did... When I went to college, I actually did... Uh, <laughs> I would do traditional cell animation. I'd paint on oh. cells. I'd layer them, take the one shot, yeah. And layer them, take them one shot, and then you'd send it off to be printed on 16 millimeter film, and then you'd wait Whoa. two weeks and you'd see your abomination come back. <laughs> that was just absolutely not at all what you expected with animations that yeah. like this. Fingerprints and like <laughs> paint smudged because you're not, you're like, I don't need the white gloves today. It's just not, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't need to be careful. Hair clean. between the cells because it's acetate and it just attracts every piece of dust and hair. So, oh. um, it, I, when computer software started coming around that I could animate it, and it was like, it was a breath of fresh air because I didn't have to wait for film to be developed. I'm I, no really, more hair. Part of that is that <laughs> I am a little old, and some of that is also that uh, the, the 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 program that I was at and the college I was at wasn't exactly the most advanced. So it's not exactly like it's a combo of the two. <laughs> I did learn a lot from that though, because you kind of learn how to not make mistakes early on because they they're t they're costly and timely to kind of correct them. Um, so Ian's doing some flows. Okay. Just doing a little choice tree. Basically, okay. like uh, UML. Hmm? UML. UML. No, no. Not familiar. That's like the. I think it's a methodology in project management. Ah. With you. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, where you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's as influence. old as Illustrator. Yes, okay. it's yeah, right up there with Gantt charts. Uh, in Illustrator, we celebrated the uh, 30th anniversary this year. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. 30 years. 30? Yeah. <laughs> is Illustrator older than Photoshop? Yeah. Yeah. Photoshop, I think, is like 28. I mean, it's, it's very close. It's very close. It's a little bit mm -hmm. younger. Yeah. I'll just move that back there. This is I'm just doing like a, um, what happens when a person goes to the home page and or the splash screen okay, and splash hits screen. a button to start, whether or not they have a save game or not is going to be two different screens because oh, it's going to be different yeah, content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm just kind of branching that out now so that we have like an idea of like how this works. Um, and then we're going to have, oops, don't need to do that. This. I'm bad with hotkeys too, so if you're looking for hotkey god mode, this is not the stream. They're asking, <laughs> about, the, they're asking about the UI of that, uh, Diablo 3, mm -hmm. if you worked on this one. Yes. Nick did, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you worked on this one. Yeah, I did not. They say it was very polished. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, that game, I 
think was in development for something like 10 years. It was de in development ever since Diablo 2 finished. Um, oh. So the fact that I was on it for two years feels like baby mode, the amount of time <laughs> that it was being developed. But um, yeah, I didn't work on the console version of it. I worked on the PC. So the they're PC discussing release. in the chat about carrier changes. So you have a, for instance, uh, who Mike saying, oh, I'm on board with the print design. Now I'm moving to this. And, um, so like you, Nick, like you, you had a completely different background, no? Like you started with any pure animation, or it was just part of the school. Uh, I started education? with comic book. I used to do okay. comic book inking, and then oh. I and then I went to go do animation. So I have a very traditional, more traditional art background, um, and then I kind of got more into design as as time went on. Um, but. It's one of the top things I tell anyone who goes into, you know, how do I become a UI UX designer in mm -hmm. games nowadays? Uh, don't just be a UI UX designer. Okay. Code, draw art, do something because conveying your ideas doesn't always happen in, in XD format. It, mm -hmm. XD is an amazing tool, but it's sometimes you need to use some of your other skills together because like other people are like, you understand it mm -hmm. and you understand how, to, how that, how the screen works and how the boxes move but someone else may be having and this happens all the time like they can't see it unless it has yeah. like visuals to it and especially so, for games i guess it's yeah, so for games, important to have an immersive experience compared yes. with the app or um and, so and you I, Ian, so when did you realize that you wanted to draw uh, flow charts for your life <laughs> so like two weeks ago so yes exactly to do flow uh, I, I actually started as a as a ui artist as well oh, okay. um and uh, yeah, I was uh, I started out doing web um, websites for games, or? Uh, just websites in, in general. general. Um, and then uh, I was hired by Sony and was doing uh, a web design for games at that point. Oh. Um, and I transitioned from doing webs, webs, doing U, uh, uh, art for web into UI for games. <laughs> um, and, yeah, Sony. Uh, or? I was at Sony at the oh, time, okay. um, and uh, yeah, PlantSide and EverQuest One were the first two UIs that I did. Okay. Um, and then from there, I ended up becoming a 3D artist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Started doing uh, 3D character design on EverQuest One. Um, so do they did they have their own uh, 3D models or? You? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a, yeah. So. Like there's a there's a. Um, the a EverQuest at the time was in house. Uh, uh, two software. story. It was a two story building. The team was across split across two oh. uh, two floors. All the designers were on top. All the artists were on the bottom. Um, and uh, yeah, there was uh, one side of the pit was animators and effects artists and environment artists, and then the character guy is all set on the the far end. Um, and the art directors were nearby. Um, but yeah, that was uh, a lot of old school uh, game design and stuff because that engine was pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing right now, just to kind of go into this, is I'm, uh, I'm taking, I took all my, my font, I broke it apart. Okay. And then I, uh, so I broke it apart and then I broke each individual one apart into just just vectors. Oh yeah. Um, and then I regrouped them. So so and the reason I'm doing this is well one, I'm not gonna have font issues if for some reason, you know, that, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is that I, I plan on going in and altering the points of these and kind of making a little fun oh. and kind of skewing it a little. So um, going in and doing this is just kind of prep work for for kind of I'm gonna alter this. And it's not something I do for every time I, I, I start doing a font or start doing silhouettes. I think another thing that's missing from this process is that I when I when we do brands or we do fonts, I'll do like five of these. I'll do like five silhouettes and real quick and I'll get them in front of a client. Right? Okay. I mean it's like anyone who's done branding or done font work, like they understand that like Obviously, you do the funneling, right? You start off with like kind of some more simple silhouettes. Client picks a couple that they like. Maybe they like a little from column A, a little from column B. Merge them together, and then you're kind of like like this, and they go yeah, and then you can kind of start going deeper and deeper and deeper into refining the font. Uh, in this sense, this demonstration, I'm basically I, I kind of know exactly what we're going to go into and what we kind of want to accomplish. And in this case, we'll just say the client's like, just go with it. I know it. I know we're we're on the same page. Let's just let's just. Let's let's knock out one and see kind of where we're at. So, for the sake of uh, for the sake of the stream, I'm just basically going to hand wave that a little bit and 
Let's see if we can. Uh, yeah, it's definitely pain, this painful little. building flowcharts in XD. It's not built for that, but I just do it anyway because it's it's not that much yeah, faster or okay. slower than anywhere else. And we're talking between like normally this is like a five minute thing. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, by the way, we have a contest going on for the people watching us. Mm -hmm. uh, they can uh, actually use XD to create um, and share with us a prototype. The theme of the day is travel. Okay, So, to, tomorrow it will be another theme. And they can share it with us in the chat. And um, I will feature some of the prototype they have okay. created today. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the show, I will ask you which one you prefer. Okay. Okay. And uh, the author of uh, this prototype will win a credit card subscription. Oh, awesome. So, like, oh, man. We get to be judges. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. So no, that's can, totally fine. I can start by showing you uh, five of them, okay? That cool. have been shared today. Perfect. So there is a flight path. Mm -hmm. I'm discovering the app with you. Huh? So okay. let's see what's going on. Okay. Planning. Okay, explore. Oh, where do you want to go? Callisto. I think oh, Saturn, get of course. <laughs> let's go to Saturn. Okay. <laughs> so that's nice, like three screen experience, and that works. Cool. Uh, Alt Travels, okay, this is completely different. With Claire de Lune. Oh, okay, this is uh, a pun. So I guess it's <laughs> made by a French guy. Uh, uh, figured. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Expensive. Okay, thank you, that was funny. Uh, this one looks more professional, like what do you want to do? See results. Oh, you should go to Barcelona <laughs> to play it tennis. It looks beautiful, for sure. And my package. Nice. Cool. We have the Cruise Nation. Nice logo. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very. Oh, you select what you want to enjoy, Ooh. and you select your cruise. With calling, add to fabs. Yeah. Really like that one. Yeah. That's nice. Nice experience. Mm -hmm. And the Adobe Travel. Ah. Oh. Adobe <laughs> Travel, huh? You guys, new get in, you guys getting cloud. into new stuff? <laughs> new York. Golden Gate. Oh, nice. Using Settings. Transitions. Yeah, nice. it's clean. Huh? Yeah, it's very clean. Yeah, keep sharing. That's is that good. The, is that the uh, Behance Blue? Uh, it looks like the Behance Blue. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just dropping this in here right now as a placeholder. We already decided what our um, font was, so I'm just going to drop that in there. We did prep before this. We have all this stuff prepped, so um, <laughs> it, if, if things look like decisions are being made, yeah, very quickly, very sometimes, quickly. Um, sometimes it, what I do too. It's it's just for the timeline, so that we can get through the process. Sometimes I do it like this. So this is a little bit weird. I find that um, setting the uh, especially for these things, these are like full screen images. Um, uh, I'll just set a box in the background as the color. Oh, we have some juices. Look at that. Oh, fantastic. What uh, do you want? Um, strawberry? <laughs> lime? I'll do the lime. Or a pink one. It just says Lime's pink. pink. It, just says pink? The, it just says pink? just says pink. Is that a flavor? It says pink. Thank you. I'll take. Just, just throw one at me. I don't know. Probably not throw. Okay, pink. Pink I it is. I got pink. Uh, Cheers. Wow, that smells pink. Yeah. Does mm -hmm. it taste pink? Yeah. It's very oh, pink. Oh, yeah, it tastes pink. It's so pinky. If you could taste pink, <laughs> that's what pink would taste like. <laughs> oh, my God, there's a lot of... Don't quote me. <laughs> sugar. Please. Yeah, there's a lot of sugar. I was not that expecting things. this. That was a sugar bomb, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Woo. Woo. A lot of sugar. <laughs> Oh, I'm, okay. I'm ready to go for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that I like, you can change artboard color, right? You can just go in here yeah, if you say and, you know, and, and click the artboard. So, part of the problem is, is uh, if you have 50 artboards, yeah. you have to go and select every single one yeah. of your artboards if you want to change the colors across. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things that I started messing with was um, I just made this a symbol. And, oh, is it a symbol? And in now the asset panel? I can, yeah. Now I can just change Whoa. the color. It changes all the colors of my artboards. So I, if I don't, if it's too dark or too light, I can just change it and it changes everything. And I don't have to click anything. Just one. Uh, symbols. A little shortcut. <laughs> Pro tip. Um, so we'll make this white because why not? 
So do you do uh, user testing? Is it part of your mission too? Or? Um, usually if we do, it's we do it with an external company um, because oh, okay. it there's so do, much stuff to yeah. do. Like, And there's so many variants of user testing. Yeah. Like you could do, um, like personally, one of the types of user testing that I really find the most useful is um, doing uh, like in-house studies where you actually send a, a computer or just a webcam oh. and all the equipment to the user's house. Um, they play oh, the game from their home in the environment, the environment they would normally play in and they um, uh, and they do like uh, video journals. Like they have to do like video journals, like a 10 minute journal. They have to play like a certain number of hours a week and they're just doing it in their home or in their dorm or whatever and you get a lot of really great feedback because uh, there's no one there it's just them talking to a camera and whatever so they're just going to be blunt <laughs> and a little more uh, oh that's cool I didn't know it existed uh, yeah it's uh, th that's a, a thing that we have done at other companies um, but there's there's external companies that basically will set up all that stuff and they yeah, already yeah. Have, they have all the eye tracking gear that, yeah. and everything like it would be very expensive to like just do that on a client for client basis and have to buy all that gear and then go find people that do, like they they have testing um, groups of people that yeah. they can ping and get uh, they they know their market groups and everything too. So I think it's also important to note that we were spoiled while at Blizzard <laughs> because Blizzard is such a large gaming company that we would and yes we did do this we would patch we would we would have like a basically an alpha patch and. Everyone, not everyone, but people who were really tenacious about playing the game would go online, Twitch stream it, and you want to talk about mm. no holds barred, unadulterated, like straight unfiltered feedback. When people hate stuff, they just They're say clicking it. around, they're like, this sucks. These people should be shot. And you're like, what? Why? <laughs> Why? What did I do? We didn't do anything. And so like, you would kind of get the raw end of it, but, uh, and you have to definitely digest and parse what is good and what, what is good feedback and what is bad. Um, also put your feet again put your feelings aside of like oh well you know that th i worked on that system a really long time but four out of these five streamers hate it and you're not going to get any more raw feedback than that if them just being like don't do it that way <laughs> um which is another thing phrase that we bring up in gaming which is the best ux isn't always the most fun game it's true uh which is we i'm not going to say it's it's just with gaming but it's definitely something that's uh prevalent hmm. in gaming where We'll do what is actually the appropriate user experience for someone to walk through. It goes through this step, this step, this step. It's most clean. Sometimes someone just goes, "I lose the theme." Like oh. with with games, everything has they they you kind of pierce this veil of going into the game, and the theme kind of surrounds you. Um, and uh, sometimes taking people out of that, if there's a user experience that takes people out of that, even though if it's the most clean way to do it. People, are, people don't warm up to it. They don't like it. So you have to do actually something that's a little less efficient, but it's just more... I hate using the word fun because it's, it's not quantifiable. You can't like... like but something sometimes you do something where it's just kind of counterintuitive and 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 it it's just because people are like, oh, they want to stay in the theme and want it to be fun. Is it your birthday? It is my, <laughs> bir it is my birthday. Who you've did been, that? You've been outed. Who oh, did that? Surprise. Oh, no, no. Your wife. My wife out of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's all wish a happy birthday to Nick in the chat. Happy birthday, Nicholas. Thank you. That secret was kept for about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to cheat uh, because I have another file. Um, so I have a... Uh, I built a... A file for um, doing wires for console games. Oh. Um, that is just all the buttons and, and stuff oh, cool. that you need for um, demonstrating those. So generally, awesome. they're the only things that uh, like a are UI be kit colored. for. Yeah, it's like yep. a little UI kit just for, for console games. games. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I don't remember where I put them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the recent files. Nah, it's in. Um, mm -hmm. It's right here. Oh, yeah. Console buttons. Ta da! Ah, cool. So, yeah, I just got like PlayStation and. Uh, we'll, we'll say we're, we're doing PlayStation game today. And this is super helpful because. <laughs> 
I'll end up, you know, basically some of the processes, I'll end up taking his wires mm. and just overlaying them on screenshots or things that I've started and then just cutting it up and moving it into the exact right locations. And then basically, sometimes I'll trace on top of it. Sometimes I'll get his wire and it looks awful in art. Like <laughs> the wireframe didn't translate to the art because yeah. um, that happens a lot. Because it's like a lot of times the wires are very focused on functionality, yeah. and we're not doing as much art in the wires. Uh, mainly because if you start making the wires very artistic, um, it can be a lot more difficult. Because what will happen is someone will be like, "Yeah, well, now uh, levels go to a thousand instead of a hundred. And if you did like really nice containers and things like that and uh, yeah. everything else now, it, you have to redesign all of this stuff and it's easier just to draw a box, right? Like, <laughs> um, so it, there's a little bit of push and, and give there. Um, but I mean, Nick and I have worked together for, for like six, five years, six years, something like that now. Quite a while. So we kind of just know where the other one's gonna fill in the gaps um, and just kind of work that way. And someone is asking, I'm curious, is there a UI decision where some Creative Cloud apps have rounded corners and other apps don't? Wait. What, what was, was the question? That's again? a question for me. Like some Adobe apps such as XD, mm -hmm. and if you notice, yeah, has rounded can... corners, like the icon. Oh, the icon. Yeah, oh, the yeah. icon. Yeah. And like, you guys yeah. just you did see, that, didn't you? Yeah, this is brand new. Uh -huh. this is like... But Illustrator? Yeah, it is. No rounded corners. Right. Yeah. This Are you guys going to the rounded corners? Is that. It's a run, so they get rounded corners if they if they are part of the I would say the next generation of Creative Cloud apps um, connected yeah. to uh, with the Cloud Services collaboration. Oh, I see. And um, and also super fast, light like XD mm -hmm. uh, Dimension is the new one. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we have the rounded corners. The new Lightroom CC yep. that we uh, unveiled uh, last week uh, is only cloud based. So yeah, Photoshop isn't light. Photoshop? Uh, <laughs> Photo uh, no. Photoshop, Photoshop is for the UI? tool it is because, well, Photoshop is the tool it is because it you can do everything no, in that's it. Yeah. Because of that, yeah. it's the freedom. it has everything in it. Yeah. yeah. It's one yeah. of those, it's a double edged sword, right? Yeah. It's the no, tool it's that does everything, but it also has everything in it. Yeah. Um, I, I think that was one so of the things. So you load all the plugins, you load all the features every time, you're like, yep. okay, I have to deal with it. And uh, fonts and plugins. And render uh, yep. 3,000 layers. Yep. Yeah, exactly. 3,236. But at the end of the day, it works, which is amazing yes. when you think about it. Even with high resolution pictures and stuff, so it works. Make sure this stuff's all centered. So I'm, um, I'm just gonna grab these and... I'm making candy things. now, because... Yeah, gotta have the candy. <laughs> so I some of these logos that we had from our mood board had mm -hmm. some like Oops. nice little personality elements in them where like the yeah. negative space was knocked out so like what I'm gonna do is like the skull with the yeah like the skull and and that's a genius logo I wish I could I wish I could do something that was that was of of that that level I think it would take some some time and iteration to get it close to that but um, right now what I'm doing is is I've, I've kind of blocked out the shape of the logo and I've kind of uh, I haven't gone in and kind of tweaked and altered it, but I have just rotated and scaled just the basic font and filled in the O's because I'm gonna put I'm gonna put candy in in the O's. I think that would look kind of kind of neat, um, oh, yeah, kind nice. of lighthearted. And you have two O's. Really. I have two good. O's. Um, I I will say that when I first started doing this, because uh, we we did prep for this and kind of mm -hmm. knew what we were doing, but uh, I started off with eyes, and they're too far apart. So they like they didn't read really his eyes. They just looked as really bad circles <laughs> in the O's. Like they, they didn't read. <laughs> um, and I, I think that's one of those things where it's like, well, maybe it would work if it was animated because the eyes could go whoop, whoop, back and forth, but you're never going to have that luxury in a printed ad or anything. So um, I think we decided to kind of peel it back and do some of the feels just to just look. Because this is a trick-or-treating game. So it would be kind of good to put, put some candy in there and bring, mm -hmm. the, bring the theme in. build a little option screen. I also um, notice all my uh, wires are labeled with 0001, 02A, 02B. The, um, I do that so that when I spit out JPEGs, they stay in order. Nice. That way I don't have to go and folder. figure out and rename them. Hmm. Um, and that way also it's so that in case I forget what screen is supposed to go to what when I'm doing prototyping, I'm like, oh yeah, this is supposed to link to this. Oh, this is branch like, two. Yeah, yeah, this is branch two or branch three or nice. whatever. 
So one thing I like about illustrating in Flash is if I want a shape, I pull up my line tool. Oh yeah. And you just click to remove the. Yep. Yeah. And even if I have like I've done this before, this 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 is totally weird, right. I have a bunch of shapes I want to make, and these are just random shapes. Mm -hmm. And I go and I, whoop, I go and I fill them. I'll sometimes go like this, <laughs> just so I can go like that. <laughs> it's it. I'll attach all the lines so I can double click and remove them. That's it, good. It's. It, that's what I mean. It's it's really strange, and someone's like, "Well, you could do it that better in Illustrator." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I don't know Illustrator as well." So, it, and this is really really quick. Uh, when you know how to draw in a Flash or Animate, I mean, you, you can be super fast. It can be super fast because, like, you were talking about cell animation, mm -hmm. you know, and um, like you have a lot of animators. They still use Animate for uh, frame by frame animation. Yep. Mainly to do cartoons today, like uh, a lot of uh, cartoons that you see on TV, yep. they are still using Animate. Uh, because you can export now uh, 4K videos from Animate you yep. can, or a PNG sequence. Let's put some sliders in there. Oops. Candies. <laughs> Groupings. And you'll have to excuse me. I um. I bounce back and forth from PC to Mac depending on the week and what software I'm using. Oh, yeah. So um, I was on I was on a PC all last week. So I'm doing the I'm I'm hitting all control shortcuts, a lot yeah. as I opposed know. to yeah, and it's just it's a nightmare. Just when you transition, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's 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 just whatever is most efficient um, for me to use at the time. I used to transition also from uh, a QWERTY keyboard to a French <laughs> one. Oh God, no! Yeah, I, there's, that, it's there were some programmers there. that would swap from QWERTY to Dvorak. Dvorak, yeah. Because they, for whatever reason, they preferred Dvorak because they type faster on it or whatever. Um, yeah. And uh, but they had a, Qu a QWERTY keyboard, but they had a switch that remapped all their keys to Dvorak. And uh, when someone else, they would uh, do, they would, would joke some but with some yeah. people, right? They'd be like, hey, can you come look at my code or whatever? And they'd sit down and, and they would try, try to type something it. and it's just garbly good. Like, <laughs> what is going on? Practical jokes. Engineering jokes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah they're, they're dad jokes, basically, but nerdier. Yeah. <laughs> if that's possible. Okay, so can you deliver? So Kartikeyan is asking... And VHD has provision to do red lines and style guides for developer needs. Ah, okay. So it, I think it's part of the handoff process. So actually, after uh, Nick and Ian, we will be live in about 45 minutes with uh, Tallinn, who is the lead designer of Adobe XD. Oh, excellent. Uh, and you, you can talk with him about uh, the handoff process. So handoff is uh, you, you design, you prototype, you get user feedback, and now how can, how you, how can you uh, share your XD file with a developer? A developer who will uh, extract the assets, understand the positions of your elements. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are definitely working on something. Uh, and maybe Tanin will be able to share more about it. But today it's not available. Like today, um, what usually, uh, what I see in agencies is that you just give to uh, the developer. So either you export all the visual oh, assets wow. or you directly give him the XD file. Yep. I love doing this. <laughs> oh yeah, the repeat grade. It's the best. Oh, it's so good. Repeat grade is the most satisfying. <laughs> it's so good. It's like because when you need it's it like and you magic, do it, really. you just you feel like you just stole time. Yeah. You're like, oh. It's like, there now we have bars done. It's a little bit harder to line stuff up, but you can eyeball it. It's good enough. I keep hitting that button instead of the space button. Uh, so now we gotta move these up. It's gonna need more space. Also, another thing that I do that um, may be kind of weird is when I do scaling, mm -hmm. I always use scale and rotate. I think it was a habit I got into, and the keyboard shortcuts just mashing your fingers in a triangle on the keyboard and coming up with scale and rotate. And I, I do everything with, oh. with, with that. Sometimes I'll go in and tweak and use the transform tool, okay. but I know I'm at a point where I like. 115% or 90% is just enough a little down or a little up oh. that I can just go ahead and I can and it's since it saves my last he, somebody prototype Saturn now in the just in time funny. pandering pandering to the oh I see what you're doing <laughs> someone wants that for a year <laughs> can't blame them flattery will get you everything oh I see what you do okay interesting yeah, so I'll just I'll do that. You just scale incrementally. Or step up. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 
funny. And it's because I used to do a lot of animation in Flash, and the easiest way for me to do it without yeah. having to like creating a keyframe, you know, it's still in position. Yeah, I just and it it's really fast. A lot of a lot of what Ian and I do with processes, we're constantly trying to just use the software or use the process that's the fastest to to just get in and out of. I mean, that's it's Flash. The reason I use Flash for for vector drawing is I, I think you were saying it too. Once you kind of Sorry, animate. <laughs> Doing that a lot. Once you use animate to, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, once you once you use it, you you get really used to it quick. It doesn't have the the tool set that Illustrator has. I'm not going to be doing extensive oh, no. pen tool and pathing and ending, no. yeah, it it's just it just doesn't. So it's not a replacement if you use those heavily in what you do. I my style tends to actually not do a lot of things on curves and paths. Mm -hmm. so I tend to do a lot of little blocky shapes. Um, even when I'm doing um, I'll cut up things that should be mathematical. I do them by eye, so they have a little bit of natural. Like they, you look at them, they look right, but um, no. but sometimes I'll, I'll go in and I'll just tweak them a little so that they feel mathematically center, but they aren't mathematically center. Um, and I do that with everything that I do. Everything's got a little bit. I even I even stay away from grids when I'm first starting to do things, okay. just so I can kind of go. You just trust your eyes. I trust my eye, and I eyeball a lot of stuff, <laughs> and I, and I go really Pretty quick. Cool. Because uh, in the end, if some if they like something, I can go tighten it all up. I can get it onto the grid. I can get it, make sure that like everything is kind of, okay. Like we're doing a correct rule of thirds. We're 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 sitting. You know, our, our our gutters are nice. And and but in the beginning, if a client wants to change all of it, I just did all that mental cognitive load of moving everything to the exact pixel, and I have to now throw it away and start over. So. Um, I tend to I tend to stay really loose in the beginning, and sometimes it stays that way all the way to the end. It's it's perfectly acceptable. If it's imperceivable to to nearly everyone, unless they screenshot it, pull it into something, and show that, which actually happened on a Blizzard game once, someone went, "Yeah, you have a one extra pixel on your button from here," and I'm just like, "How, how did what? you? What? Like how? Out of all the things with the game, that was what? That's what stood out. That's what stood out. No." <laughs> So it does happen. Yeah. It got a one star review. Yeah, right. one. Yeah, yeah. One star. <laughs> Six out of ten. Uh, Brad is asking, what is the most creative UI UX you've done for a game? The most creative? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Fla uh, beside Flappy Bird. Beside Flappy Bird, right? Which basically has no UI. It's just a score. <laughs> <laughs> um, most creative um, probably some recent clients um, that we can't talk about because we're under NDA <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they had more um, integrated UI and stuff like that um, mm -hmm. where like because um, like it's it's difficult to uh, prototype um, in-world uh, UI uh, okay. in XD where you have a lot of 3D objects yeah. where things are moving or swiveling around the character like usually we'll do them flat and then we'll just bring in the flat uh, um, XD wireframe uh, into Photoshop and skew it in uh, in a 3D environment or, or render or whatever <laughs> we just okay. fake it right um, but that kind of stuff is a lot of fun I, I find that to be the most creative because the spatial needs that you have to worry about in terms of uh, building the UI so it's readable but it's far from the character and it's not flat on the screen and it's a lot more difficult but it looks so much cooler right like it's just a lot more fun because it always has those in-world effects where things are emanating from a wristwatch or, or whatever and you can do you can do a lot of fun stuff um, effects wise and stuff like that um, it's not the most clean or robust like UX experience because mm -hmm you're making a bunch of uh, compromises for the immersiveness of the experience. So you have to trade functionality sometimes or you have to trade um, the amount of stuff you can cram into a screen because you're limited by so many other factors, um, legibility and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I mean, most of the other stuff I think both Nick and I have worked on are like pretty traditional flat 2D UI, like yeah. Heroes of the Storm was a lot of flat 2D UI, World of Warcraft was a lot of flat, flat 2D UI, um, uh, EverQuest was definitely all flat 2D UI, there's no 3D there at all, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, 
but Nick and I were talking about this uh, earlier that like we <laughs> it seems like we always wanted to do the uh, really integrated like crazy UIs and we always end up on projects that aren't doing that for some reason or that <laughs> there's some art direction reason why we don't end up going they're that hard. way or whatever That's it's very why. hard oh, it's, yeah. it's the, the more UI you remove each piece that you remove gets harder and harder I think yeah. a good traditional a great example no one would, would, would question would be dead space yeah Dead Space is just one of those, like, you have no HUD, everything's integrated, it's a survival horror game, and they do that on purpose. Yeah. There's a purpose to the design and a purpose to the end functionality. It's it's meant to, the game's meant to terrify you at points. So having HUDs and UIs up actually make you, rem remind you you're playing a video game. Oh. So there's this, like, like they want to, immersion is, is a key element of that. So it's like, how do we take these things and integrate them? Like, how do we, how do we make it that there's no gun counter in the, for how much ammo oh. I have in the corner. Well, why don't we pull the camera in when he points and we have the oh, gun ammo the, on the gun holographically the. displayed. You know, there's there's things you can do and that <laughs> takes, people see that and they're like, that's easy. It's like, no, no that's really, really <laughs> difficult to do. It, it requires a very um, disciplined uh, group of people across multiple disciplines to kind of collaborate in a very fluid way to pull those things off. Because hmm. if system design or um, uh, gameplay changes radically, it's very difficult to pivot because you have all of this entrenched development required to even get it to a point where you can use it and play with it in the game. Um. So here, here I'm using things like the smooth tool. I use the smooth tool all the time. To just, I select sections and I'll smooth them out. Mm -hmm. The best tool. It's the best tool. <laughs> Smooth tool is great. <laughs> it straightens great too. If I just need to like Grab. kill a point. And what I like about that is that I'm not going into the pen tool and and working with nodes all the time. Yeah. Um, there are there are moments when I think that's really really helpful to do. Um, but if I don't have to, I avoid it like the play. Um, and here, all I'm doing is I'm tweaking corners so that when you're reading the logo left to right, the, the corners all kind of guide you from letter to letter. It's just, it's just this, this font's actually really a fantastic base. Um, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's, it's, it's already kind of mostly there. I just have to tweak it, move things around. We're starting to get actually a logo that it's like, okay. I think this kind of has that Ghostbusters feel. It has sort of that Venture Brothers feel. Um, I think I can condense this up a little bit, but for the most part, I think this is getting pretty close. And at this point, I would probably start putting in some colors. So I'm probably gonna... Yeah, if you have it black and white, um, you can... Stump it over to you. you. Talk, you can knock those candies out of there and then just drop me a, a ping. Yep. And then I can pop the, that sucker in here. Yep, just let me... Uh, Let me make sure the silhouette is working. I wanted to share with you uh, five more prototypes. Sure, I've absolutely. Been created by our friends. So we have my tracks. As you move about your tree, we'll track your moves. Ah, okay. Start 9 a.m. Active. Make a waypoint. Like run tracker. Yeah, I guess. And this is what you did. And you can share it with your friend. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Nice. The explorers. Go and explore. Okay, next adventure, join us. No program. Okay, yeah. That's a nice, uh, I guess, one of the first prototypes. First time you use XD, I mean, that's oh, nice. nice. Get the principle. Yeah. Welcome to Singapore. Yeah, nice typography. Mm -hmm. Chinatown, the food street, itinerary. Ah, okay, yeah. A lot of uh, prototypes to the you know, like uh, use the map mm -hmm. and yeah. as, a, yeah, as a way to express. I mean, that's good. Then travel. Oh, that that's was funny. There is even a loading screen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Flat screen. Be fearless in the pursuit. Next. Onboarding. Welcome to travel. Okay, let's log in. And where can where can I go? Maybe that's it. Oh no, I can go and have a coffee. I can go and have but you can't go to Saturn. <laughs> no, <laughs> not in this one. And get smarter, daily inspiration, discover, create and share. Okay. So a little tutorial. Little, yeah. Little yeah. pips. A little onboarding. Yeah. yeah. Welcome nice. Selena. Oh, okay, that's it so far, I guess. Cool. Yeah, that's good. A little onboard experience. Okay, that's wh nice. where is uh okay, let's try to reload uh 
See if we can go path. to Saturn. Yeah. Because <laughs> really wants you to go to Saturn. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a nice. Oh, that's, that's they're pretty the... good with architecture and stuff. <laughs> yeah. They already know nice. how to manage Who styles knew? and stuff. Yeah. Can you put the local you? temperature on Saturn? <laughs> 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 I really want to know from my travels. Current, current ring count. Yeah. Uh, okay. That probably doesn't change. Okay. Very keep much. sharing. Um, yeah, that's it's really nice that you can just you know uh, uh, update your uh, XD yeah, one prototype whenever, right? It's really great. Um, I do that with Nick all the time because we don't work in the same office together. <laughs> um, I work in Austin and he works in San Francisco, so yeah. oh yeah, um, it's nice just to be yeah, just reload this thing. So I'm just putting in some. Buttons. And I'm gonna stub out. Just wanna ping? Uh yeah, ping's fine. Uh, that's not gonna work. Um, you could just paste just... it into Photoshop. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. A, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna get it into Photoshop for you. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. Just, yeah, put it into Photoshop and then just export it as a ping with no background. Okay, someone using XD for the first time. Okay, so I will quickly sh share my screen because someone is asking how to use gradients in XD. And I have to admit, it's not the most intuitive uh, UI. I, I, <laughs> I have I, to admit. I use some, we, uh, we will tell time, some okay. tricks. Yeah, I use some tricks yeah. with gradients actually to hide So stuff. with gradients, so... If you go on fill color, so this is where you mm -hmm. can change the fill color, yep. you have to click here. Yep. It's and not super obvious. Like and, and then, then you have two, two dots. Colors. Okay. You can this, you can take the other one. You can input more dots if you want. Yeah, like here, do an extra step, which is warmer. And once you get there, you can start playing with your gradients, rotate it. You come back at any time and modify it. Oh, it's not. Yeah. There we go. It's not easy to, to find. I agree. But thanks for using XD for the first time. It's cool. Yeah, it's a little bit hidden. Um, uh, go. So go back to your desktop, hit go. Drop. Yeah, it's the same as if you just select here. I had it open. I already had it open down here. Wednesday, here we go. Yeah. Out of family reference. That's fine. <laughs> Ta da! It was a bad game. <laughs> it was a bad game? Yeah, oh, yeah. like really old. Really the really old one was really bad. Yeah. Super frustrating. This, this would be kind of a classic example of, all right, Ian, I've kind of finished the silhouette of the logo. Um, clients kind of approve that. And then I'll dump it over, I'll just dump an image to him so that he can kind of keep that up to date in the, in the XD wires. Oh, you gave me a PSD. I gave you a PSD. You asked it for you a PSD. Son of a Because <laughs> you can copy pasta right out of it. Yeah, but I have to open Photoshop now. I know. <laughs> so your RAM's gone? You yep. have a lot of allocated RAM to it? Probably. And <laughs> no, I probably do too. Uh, Destop. Open this guy. Boondaba. Crop tools on. Okay. So now we got this. Uh, turn this on. Yeah. You can use credit for libraries now, yeah? Hmm? The credit card libraries? Oh, yeah. yeah. We should be demoing that. I've used those a couple times. Um, I had for a while, the reason I turned them off, I had a work account and a personal account for a oh, while, and it, it was messed everything up. Yeah. It was it was, it was was awful, but now that 
probably go back to that. Give me a new PSD with this as a shape layer. Hmm? Give me a new PSD with this as a shape layer. Just right click it and rasterize it. I don't want it rasterized, it's already rastered. Do you, what do you want? You want uh, a shape, shape layer? layer yeah. yeah, just give it to me. This, this isn't a shape layer. It's no. Just a, yeah, you want me to export uh, out of uh, Flash? Uh, you want a vector? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just paste it into, into Photoshop it. and then make it a shape layer. Because uh, okay. I want to steal the candy shape out of there, too. Okay. Will do. So I'm just make two files. <laughs> okay, let's see if... I could just select it and whatever. I'm going to truth. Nope, doesn't do shape layer. Hey, Brian. No, we cannot hear the music, uh, Brian. There is a background <laughs> music. Oh, is there? There is? Yeah, <laughs> we cannot hear it. <laughs> is it elevator music or... <laughs> no, it's... Uh, it's Blaring it's a, Rage it's Against the Machine. It's an artist from Berlin. Oh, okay. Cool. Andrew Applebite. I'm going to have to SVG it and then bring it in because it yeah, doesn't that's copy fine. pasta out. That's fine. Do, 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 do. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to keep the vectors, I would say that, yeah. Like yeah. The illustrator yeah, file is the best. I'm just doing yeah. S SVG. Yeah. <sighs> Under legacy export. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's. The, I need those vectors. Definitely take. Game. It's important. <laughs> Definitely take. <laughs> oh, maybe you never switch up. I don't think console. I can. <laughs> no. Just leave it on. Like you can save, but you cannot close. Yeah, exactly. Can't ever close. It's, it's, you can, you're like the rat that can just never leave the you, maze. Just because you forgot the, the button in yes. the <laughs> You kill the experience. I'm looking like I don't know how to export files or something. I'm building a. Uh, so Jack is asking him, why are you using Animate to make a logo? Because he loves the drawing tools yep. of Animate. You can draw in Animate. You can draw in XD, in Illustrator. You can draw, yeah, Photoshop. I mean, anything that... Yeah, I've what built, you prefer. Yeah. I've built icons <coughs> that uh, in XD that we've copied into Photoshop and then just done layer effects and stuff oh. and shipped it. And that was it. Yeah. Just whatever is fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, so um, it's, screen. oh, wait, I know <laughs> oh, why. That's how you figure I it out. I know why. Oh. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. There's another menu item in here that's supposed to be load game. <laughs> <laughs> now I should be able to. Uh, generic, is that skin? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what are the difference between a, oh, an illustrator file and a SVG file? SVG file is just not there. As you mm -hmm. file, it's a XML description yeah. first. Uh, Illustrator, you have more information about uh, yeah. layers, appearances, aspects, like what Illustrator can consume. When uh, SVG is usually just made to be consumed by uh, a web browser, basically. Yeah, but it's the only um, export option that's left for vector. Oh, today it's a, it's a good standard. XD is uh, consuming SVG. It's yes. for SVG mm -hmm. files. Um, but I you just, can't uh, break them apart in if you bring uh, them in. Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. I see so what you mean. But yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why I bring that this type of stuff into um, uh, Photoshop because I'm just then very comfortable it. with the oh. shape layer, and then I can just go in and select the like I'm oh. for the O. I'm gonna go in there and select the inside of the candy piece and extract it and save it as a separate ping. Oh, okay. um, yeah, it's not. So I can use it as an asset for myself. Just deal with the roster. It's not exporting vector at all. No, I, don't know the deal is. I don't know if there's an issue with. I'm just not. Here, watch. I'm just doing it straight to my desktop. Logo, SVG, save. So Christoph is asking about the frontier between the UX design and UI design. Uh, refresh your desktop. That's or go into your desktop folder. It might be there. It's not. What the heck? Yep. Weird. So let's not dwell on it. You don't get candy right now. Sorry. 
I'll just trace it. It'll be fine. I'll just trace it inside uh, XD. It'll be fine. I can also pull up my other file and answer that one because I have it as well. I'll, I'll just do this. It's right. fine. Ghetto yeah, I don't know. So it's probably it honestly my computer probably just needs a restart. Maybe. You know, things happen. Um, and I don't want to do that on live stream. creating a start screen and we need one of those so yep. it's gonna so, have to require some illustration so I'm gonna go ahead and just illustrate that right now while I'm at it um. That's good, yeah. When you copy paste from one artwork to another one, it will save the position. Yeah, yeah, I really thing. like that, which is nice because I can just go like this and go. Um, I don't want to do that right now, so I'm going to delete these. Although I could just go into layers and delete them too, but it's easier just to do this. Oops, missed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to put one over here too because I'm going to shrink this guy down. This is going to be our loading screen. Oh. So I'm going to put the guy down Looks there. Good. And then I'm just going to go in here and uh, not trace this candy. Oh, you know what I should do? it all in. And the best finder afterwards. Mm -hmm. Oops. Grab. Oops. Okay, in about five minutes, mm -hmm. I will show you five more prototypes, and we have to choose zero. Okay. You have to choose one. Yeah. Perfect. So prefer the one of the day. So, Tanav is asking, like, uh, when you want to a customer to validate a wireframe, like, do you usually start in black and white? Do you feel it's enough, or I I usually do grayscale, gray um, mm -hmm. and I don't usually use color us most of the time. Um, and sometimes I'll go back and do color stuff. It just depends. It depends on sometimes 
if I do use color, I'll use it just to call certain things out. Yeah. Like this is bad, this is good, or this is positive, negative, that type of thing. Uh, or health bars or things like things that need to stand out visually as a, a particular element so that people can recognize what that is. Because if it's just a bunch of gray scale bars or whatever, it might not be very useful. Mm -hmm. um, it also depends on the design. Sometimes they... Um, if it's a big grid of things, you might need some color in there just to be able to tell what's going on. It might not be obvious. Oh, okay. um, or if things are color coded, like in the case of like World Warcraft, yeah, like for example, Avenger there's like yeah. uh, class colors, for example. Yeah. Um, if things are colored for class color or whatever, you probably want to put that in your wires just so that people understand that that's the intent of that design. Um, for this, like, Nick's gonna start busting out some stuff mm -hmm. and, and doing color stuff for that and uh, um, sometimes I'll go back in and um, and re-update stuff with colored backgrounds okay. and, and stuff um, and then just do black and white over the top um, it just depends really on like what the need of the game is what the client needs stick the candy on top there. so Siri is asking is there a way to use video and audio files in XD? No, so today you cannot import videos. Uh, if you want to uh, vote for these features, because I, I know it's a listed feature, it's on XD, uh, Adobe XD user voice .com. and um, yeah, video would be great. And yeah, you can add them maybe yeah, or animated GIFs. Like just something yeah. to show. Like, mm -hmm. just yeah, so you can wheel. have animated spinners and, yeah. and or just nice backgrounds, things like that. Oh yeah, yeah. stick them behind a blur frame would be nice too. Mm, that would be cool. Yeah. I love the blur frame. Yeah. So I'm just doing like a little. And I'm just um, basically right now, I'm just illustrating a sort of backdrop that will be eventually our start screen for the game. So. This is just like little rings that kind of emanate out and the oh, candy spins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that easily. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can do that. The little uh, hypno sign. Hypnotoad. Yeah. <laughs> Hypnotoad. This so. was this game also. I know, Days of the Tentacle. Yeah, 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 yeah that was another yeah. like classic yeah. Lucas Arts. Love those old games. Oops. I do that every once in a while. I accidentally click drag when I'm zooming, and oh, then it yeah. like goes in super close. Too close. So these will be like our pretend save games. So let's say we'll have one, um, one save game. Use open sands a lot. This is just clean. Um, oh, tomorrow and on Thursday, by the way, you will have a new host for the show. Oh, really? And a new host on Adobe Live. Her name is uh, Samantha Warren, and she oh, okay. she's an experienced designer at cool. Adobe. Perfect. Excellent. Well, we'll miss you. Yeah. That would be. We've 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 built this <laughs> rapport. Be a <laughs> we've built this rapport, and you're just gonna ditch out. Yeah. Already. No, I just wanted we to had make a good sure thing going. you just wanted to make sure you had a loading, you know, a load game screen. Yes. No, I feel good now. It's good. fine. We aren't getting yes. a second date, Ian. I, we can get that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's fine. <laughs> so you're here tomorrow, but Thursday will be a different. Or wait, no, oh, no, tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow, I'm, tomorrow, I'm in tomorrow time is Wednesday. Warp. Right. Today's Tuesday. Yeah. I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> I've been busy. Just pick one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say this is like your level, right? We'll say your level five. Okay, it's time. I will show you All five right. more prototypes, and you have to choose between the 15 I was showing you. So, good night. Check now. Woo. Ooh, that's pretty. Have breakfast. Woo. Okay. Ooh. Checked everything. Not sure he has to deal with uh, travel, but uh, <laughs> uh, travel hot. Okay. Hawaii. Ooh. Do you want to go to the Turtle Bay Resort? Which one would you like? Ooh. Filters. Well, it's, very, it's very pink. It. Like your it's, drink. Yeah. It looks like my drink. Yeah. <laughs> very tasty. Trip today. Okay, sign in. Oh, he's using the background blur. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Uh, it's very okay, nice. Let's zoom in here. Oh. Nice. Okay, I can close this. Okay. 
Okay. Tip for that is to make the artboard a darker color so that your blur doesn't doesn't, yeah. doesn't well, fade can, in on the edges. You can use the. Uh, you can use it uh, with the darken, background blur. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, you can darken. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. You can. Yeah, that's you right. Just crank that down. That's true. I do it all the time. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Take me. Oh, a lot of space uh, today. Yeah. Nice. Let's see if there is Saturn. <laughs> Such whoa, nice picture. Yeah, good key art. This this guy went went deep on space travel. Yeah, <laughs> and explore. Nice, yeah. nice uh, splash screen. Yeah, nice explore, key art. Explore, choose, and travel the world. Oh, that's nice. Sign in. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. It's a flow. And that's promising. Cool. Like okay. Now you have to choose. We had uh, my tracks. Okay, we had uh, the explorers with the red dots. My itinerary. China tone. We had. That's pretty uh, nice. This one, what was it? Travel with this loading screen. Yeah, that one's pretty nice too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had. Uh, Looks nice. Create and share, okay, let's do it. Welcome. We have flight path with yes, Saturn this is now. Has been updated. With Saturn. <laughs> with Saturn. The app travels with the uh, clear de lune with the pun. Using Adobe stock, that's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Barcelona, which which one was it? Ah oh, yeah. Like you select uh, what you want to do and it says, Oh, you should go to Barcelona. And then you can check out. We had the cruise nation. I like the cruise nation. Yeah, yeah, that was nice too. Continue. Nice use of blur. Mm -hmm. Nice logo. Yeah, the logo was nice. And we had the Adobe Travel. Yes, the Behance one. The Behance, 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 Behance Travel. Behance, Behance Travel. <laughs> it's also very nice. Yeah, it also yeah, flowed really nice. Mm -hmm. With a map. Yeah. Very nice too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot okay. of screens, a lot of, yeah. a lot of detail there. Yeah. So which one? Um, it's important. Huh? There so a I like this one. I like the one with the, what was the one with the little nice little logo at the top and center? It was like uh, two before the Cruise, Cruise Nation. Nation. Yeah, Cruise, Cruise Nation, Nation Travel, and then the the Adobe Travel one, I think, are the top contenders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Between those three. Yeah. Um, Rochambeau. Rochambeau. <laughs> 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 um, Let's go with. Uh, I would go with either Cruise Nation okay. or the, the 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 travel one. Okay, the, the travel two. one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one had the nice onboarding experience. Yep. But the Adobe Travel one went deep. Travel one went deep. I, <laughs> I like that one and the Cruise Nation. Those are my those are my two. So oh, if you, you like have one that overlaps, cruise? that gotcha. then that's the winner. I'm picking two out of the three, yeah. and then if you pick like, two out of the three, yeah, I like the Adobe one and the um, uh, and the travel one as well. So that would be the overlap. Yep, that's so, overlap. So the overlap is travel. Travel. I think so. Okay. Yep. Good job to the author of the travel app <laughs> with this nice onboarding experience. And all the rest of them. a Crave Card subscription. These guys know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are hats. charlatan. <laughs> Keep sharing, and tomorrow there will be a new theme. Okay. New theme for tomorrow. New theme till tomorrow. No, I won't tell them because <laughs> they'll get they a head work start on it. Night. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, they, they are smart. Like, they are smart. <laughs> they work all night on it, and then and then they'll have unfair advantage. Yeah. So you gotta have you gotta have your uh, your your date, and I'm probably gonna put in the wrong. Did it, is that the correct date? Actually, it's the 24th, right? <laughs> you see, Nick, why you shouldn't use a full red when you live stream. Oh jeez! <laughs> oh well. Just shift the red a little bit, and you're good. Yeah, there, there, fixed it. That's it. Make Done. it, make it green. <laughs> make it green. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Let's do that. That's gonna not be better. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not the same frequency, so it's, it's right. okay. It's okay. And it's it's gonna be like. deleted anyway. So. What are we doing at? Yes, Helen. Uh, tomorrow is a new theme. Oops. You will see. So you have more chances to win. New theme, unfortunately, same judges. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, roasted. I'll roast myself. Yeah. Beat, beat you to the punch. So this will be a different save. 
We'll say this is save two. This one I'm gonna further along. And this last one will be no save. Because what happens if you have no save game? So we have four minutes left. All right. Let's see if we if can. We need uh, to wrap up. Let's see if we can get to the end of this just splash screen for okay. today, because that would be that's kind of where we wanted to end. We have three yeah. screens, and so it'd be kind of. So that's kind of the front end flow there. Okay. So you've got press any key button, you just hit that, and you'll go into here, and then you've got new game options. So this screen, you would actually hit this if you didn't have a save. If you already had a save game, then you get continue, or you can start a new game, or you can load a game. Um, obviously, if you have no saves, you don't need load there, so it just didn't have it there. Um, so continue would then take you to your load screen. So this would be art or what have you in the background. Um, Options would take you down here to options and then you select this stuff and go back and takes you back So we could go in and just kind of like go into prototype, right? Mm -hmm. and Grab these guys and say, you know, new game goes whoosh, Takes you off over there and Options gonna take you down here mm -hmm. um, Exit won't do anything <laughs> There's nothing to exit to um, Press any key will get you here. Sometimes I do this too. So this is kind of a problem, right? I have two paths here. Um, I've got this screen. Oh yeah. That's a start screen, and this they occupy the same space. Yeah. Because you would go here if you pressed any key. So hmm. what do you do? Sometimes I'll just do this as the other screen. Um, oh. Sometimes I'll go back into design, into design, and I'll just create a little secret button over here. Oh, like, that's a, like, like a hit zone. Yeah, it's just a hit zone, but it doesn't actually have anything there. It's just a box. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can go into prototype and go crank that over there. So now, if you just preview this, right? Like, uh, oh, yeah, it didn't set the home screen. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nicholas. So, yeah, so now go there. Um, oops. Can't go back. There should be. Yeah, so yeah, now you get to yeah. Cool. For some reason, the hitboxes weren't flashing. Usually it does that. Uh, I guess it's only on the web. Just on the web. Yeah, yeah. I'm so used to exporting to the web and not doing the web preview. But um, yeah, so then cool. continue, just gonna go over here. Um, and maybe you can look at uh, Nick where you're at. Yep. You have this landscape. So I, I, I have started the start screen and I'm gonna I'm put together this landscape. So this is again based off of this just very silhouette y mm -hmm. stuff that we kind of started doing. And um, so I've got this kind of house with uh, kind of in, in the woods. Um, got my logo with the candy in it so I'm, I, at this point I'm pretty happy with it I could also go ahead and show you sort of uh, I can either continue with this next stream and do some, some colors on it or I could show you kind of what what applying some colors because I know we have 50 seconds left so I could I could just jump to that if you want to see it what the colors look like on it oh we can see it tomorrow tomorrow yeah. okay let's do it that should tomorrow be a good then. start yeah yeah. To add some colors. Add some colors. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Same time. Yeah. Same For time. Sure. Yeah. Same I'm excited place. now. Yeah. All right. And that uh, should be fun. We'll still More be colors. live, so we'll be back in about five minutes with uh, Tallinn and Daniel. So they work in the uh, XD team. They are mm -hmm. both uh, designers. Tallinn is actually the lead designer of, of uh, XD. Excellent. So, if you want new features, if you want to push him to <laughs> sneak some stuff, so we should harass uh, sorry, him. Okay? We yeah. can we just chat on the couch there to him as those come oh, in, yeah. and you then wait and go. That. That's Hold me. up signs of <laughs> new yeah. features constantly, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone, and uh, see you in five minutes on behinds.net/live. We will be back with yeah. a new Adobe Live show. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>